Good morning. Today's verse is Psalms 19:14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Now see, this is why I love doing doing these videos because there are verses that we go through and we read them, and if I were to read this a, a year ago, a couple years ago, I would have said, "Yeah, okay, God, I want you to I, I really want you to hear me saying the right things. I really want you to 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 see me thinking the right things. But there is so much more than that. So, so much more. You know, when I started actually the job that I have now, I sat at Red Lobster with, with my family and my uncle, Uncle Norm was there. And he asked me because I was going to work for the company that he, that he works for and that my aunt works for. I, he asked me, how did I feel? And I said, I was nervous. And he told me, he said, you know, anybody that ever started a new job, if they tell you they're not nervous, they're either a liar or a fool. Now, granted, the liar portion of that, we, we can't really deal with that. That's, that's a whole other issue in and of itself. I mean, it deals with lying, it deals with pride, it deals with so many things. But the fool part is where I really wanna focus. You see, in this verse, it's saying, God, may my, may my mouth say the words that you want me to say. And, but may my heart feel the things and think the things, the meditations of my heart, may they be the things that you want them to be. Now let's think about this. When we go start a new job, we walk in and quite often we have that reservation, that buyer's remorse, if you will. We don't know if we're doing the right thing. Can I really do this? Can I keep up? Do I know what I'm doing? And we take off and we start doing that job. Oftentimes, once we get past that fear, it's still there, but now we're trying to prove ourselves. But the only way to prove ourselves is to really stop showing what we can do and stop and listen to what our boss wants us to do. And here's the trick about this verse. If we don't know what our boss wants us to do, how can we possibly please him? We have no idea who he is. And that's what this verse is saying. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. And that's not saying, God, please bless the things that I say and do. What it's saying is, God, please help me to be in tune with what, with what you are doing, with where you are, with what you want, with what you want. May my prayers mirror the things that you want in your kingdom here on earth. May I be in tune with you. May, be, may I know you so well, Lord, that I, can, that I can hear you and that you speak to me. Not through my studying, not through reading the Bible. That's, that's, that's superficial knowledge. We can read it, but it's when we start to pull it apart, when we start to dig into the meaning behind it. So many times we see Jesus teach in parables and in stories. And last night I sat through a fantastic presentation by Pastor Brian. And one of the things that he pointed out is that even when, when, when John the Baptist was in prison ready to be beheaded, he had doubts, he had fears. Maybe that fool moment took over. And for a moment, he went back to his cousin, Jesus. He sent his people to Jesus and, and had them ask him, are you the one? That moment of doubt, that am, am I making a big mistake? Are you going to save me? Are you going to make this better? And Jesus didn't answer him straight out. This is what Pastor Brian told us last night. Jesus didn't answer straight out. He said, yes, I'm the one. Look no further. I'm the one. What he said was essentially, go back in the scripture Compare who I am, compare the actions, the words of my mouth, the things that I say, the things that I do, compare those to what you know to be true in scripture. And see, if we don't know the scripture, if we're not reading the Bible, if we're not in church, if we're not in fellowship, then we will miss the message that's being said before us. We would look at a burning bush and go running for the fire extinguisher. Think about that. If Moses, for a second, would have seen that burning bush and went, oh my goodness, and ran off for a pail of water. But he didn't. He stopped and he listened. Because we can look at the things in the world that go on today and we can explain God's miracles away. I mean, this shirt, science, the theoretical study of how God does stuff. That's what science is. Science proves what God did. He gave us something to hold on to, a thread but not enough to save us because that is through faith. So that's what this verse is saying. May the words of my mouth, the things that I do, the things that I preach, the, the person that people see me as, may they please you. 
and the meditation of my heart. God, my thoughts, may my thoughts be in line with what you have planned for this world, for your kingdom, for this eternity. The one that you've put me in and you knew me so well that you know how I would react so that everything you drew out in your master plan comes true. And I'm asking for you to help me in these. That's what this is. We're asking the Lord to help us be in tune with him, be aligned with him, know him, and try to know him in some way, the way he loves us, the way he knows us. And it goes on to say, oh Lord, the person that I am supposed to obey, oh Lord, please help me to obey you. Oh Lord, my rock, the thing that holds me close, the thing that keeps me, the firm foundation that I can build my life upon, my rock and my redeemer, Jesus, the one who came to save me, the one who came to make me righteous, make me right with you again, oh Lord, make me able to to be the person that you intended me to be by being close to you and by knowing you and having an intimate relationship with you. That's what this verse is saying. So again, Psalms 19, 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Father God, thank you for verses like this that, Lord, that are so beautiful in the fact that they, they, they lay it out so plainly that we can understand the superficial part of it. But God, thank you for calling us in deeper. Lord, thank you for for writing and and speaking in such a way that we have to spend time in your word and time in your church and time in your community of believers such that we can actually understand the full meaning of what you're saying. Father God, your verses are so beautiful and they are so refreshing and they are so exciting and empowering. Lord, let us know your word such that we can walk it. Let us walk the talk that you've, te- that you've taught us. Lord, I pray that those that, that aren't making it to church, Lord, I pray that they get there. We, we have to be in step with you in order to follow you. We have to know you. So Lord, please open our ears, open our hearts to you such that we, maybe we question the things around us, but Lord, let us question them back to you. You're big enough, you can handle it. And Lord, if we are comfortable enough to come to you in our questions and to come to us in our weak moments, that is the relationship that we crave to have with you. Father God, thank you for being there for your mercies, your graces, your everlasting blessings, and your everlasting, never-ending love, powerful, unrelenting love. Father God, thank you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. pray that your eyes of your heart are open today and that you look back and you go find Jesus because, my goodness, before you meet your creator, I pray that you've gotten to know his son. Have a fantastic day. Meditate on this a little bit and really dig into where God's voice is in your world so that you know who he is and who he's made you to be. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.